everybody and welcome back to FSI DFS. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Looking at the seven game main slate uh, on DK here. One rain game we have to be paying attention to is the game in Atlanta. Uh, my phone app says 40 to 50% chance of rain throughout the, throughout the night. So just pay attention to that. Uh, it's going to change throughout the day. Um, but yeah, so looking at the pitchers, Javier Morton, Castillo Burns, those are your top four in terms of salary on this slate. I uh, just kind of talked about uh, Atlanta being a dicey rain game for Morton, um, and it's against the Dodgers. A tougher matchup, not as tough as years past, but still a tougher matchup. Um, so I do have a little bit limited, more limited interest in him. If it does look like, you know, the rain's going to be holding off, I do think it could be a fantastic GPP play. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm going to have limited interest in him just because of the higher rain threat um, going on there. I think your big question up at the top is going to be Javier versus Castillo. Uh, we do have the sheet. We'll pull that up here in a second. But Javier and Castillo, that's going to be like your big decision. I could see, I don't know where ownership's going to shake out, honestly. Uh, Castillo's got a far better matchup going up against Oakland at home. Um, 9.2K, he's cheaper than Javier. Uh, he still can strike guys out at a great uh, rate. Uh, the only issue with him is that he's allowing quite a bit of hard contact uh, this season. It's really what's driven his numbers down, especially as of late. Uh, you can see he hasn't hit 20 DK points in five, five starts and six of his past seven starts. Um, but like he's still getting those high strikeout games, getting eight, nine, uh, close to 10 strikeouts. So like the ceiling is definitely there. I do think he's going to be extremely popular, um, but the hard hit rate does bother me a little bit. Um, Javier on the other side, he's got a tougher matchup going against Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee really struggles against left-handed pitching, but Javier's a right-handed pitcher, so like their numbers aren't as bad as like they look overall. Um, but Javier, you know, he's got he's got just as much strikeout upside, if not more, uh, than Castillo does. Uh, he limits the hard contact more so than Castillo does. Overall, he's just got better numbers um, and all that stuff. So I don't know where uh, ownership's going to shake out. I really think that's probably what's going to determine um, who you go with here. Uh, but I think they're both fantastic, fantastic plays. I do have Castillo ranked up a little bit better um, than Javier. What we're going to talk about, don't hit, like him too much with the rain game, but still I think if the rain does hold off, could be a great GPP play. And then you got Burns uh, going up on the opposite side of that game uh, in Milwaukee facing Houston. Houston can strike out quite a bit. Believe it or not, they actually have a below um, average, so under 100, uh, WRC plus against right-handed pitching so far this season. So um, they're a bottom half team in offense against right-handed pitching. Burns. We know what Burns can do. We know what his upside can be. Uh, dudes haven't seen it as much or as frequently as we'd like so far this season. Kind of like Castillo, essentially. Uh, but I do think it could be a fine play. Going into the mid-tier, Ober, uh, he's going to be the cover of this video here. He has just been rock solid uh, throughout the season. He's been the floor machine as of late, uh, and his salary really hasn't moved too much in the past couple of starts. Uh, but you can see. Uh, look at like how many earned runs. Look at how many strikeouts he's allowing. It is fantastic. We love it. Um, just nice and consistent. Zero or one earned runs in four of his five starts. Going up against San Francisco. Um, it's great. It's great. Love over. I think he's going to be definitely played. It's going to be kind of like an over and then pick one of these guys that you want. Do you want Castillo? Do you want Javier? Maybe even Burns if you want to go a little bit more GPP. But if you go with these guys, you got 4K remaining uh, for your bats. Singer, uh, Singer and Lorenzen going up against each other. Um, Detroit and uh, Kansas City. But, you know, not really thrilled with either of the pitchers. Singer allows a lot of hard contact, like a lot of hard contact. Um, and like his XFIP is way higher than his ERA is. Uh, so there is a little hesitation in that. But, you know, he can strike out some guys. And he's. Like, it's Detroit and Kansas City, the two worst offenses against right-handed pitching in the entire league. So, I mean, you're going to have some interest in that just because they're facing the worst offenses in the league uh, against their pitch hand. Tanner Houck, he's kind of like a leftover guy um, in that mid-tier. Don't have too much interest. And then, like, below them, I just don't have any interest. Like, I'm fading all of those cheap guys on the pitching slate here tonight. Uh, like, pitching is very affordable. I mean, once you jam in over 8.1K... Even with a high price guy, you got 4K remaining for the rest of your bets. So I don't have any interest in the low guys. Over is probably as low as I would go. Maybe Singer and Lorenzen in like a GPP play. Going into uh, the bats. 
Seattle, I actually have them as the top bats. I know it's a Coors Field slate. I know it's a Coors Field slate with, uh, you know, some pitchers that can't struggle. Um, I'm not interested in Cabrera. Uh, one, Coors Field. Two, he's coming off the IL, so just don't like doing that. Uh, but looking at this Coors Field slate, we'll start with them, actually. Miami. Miami going, to, and again, going up against a bad pitcher in Coors Field seems like a lock. Like, they have the highest implied run total on the entire slate. Like... They seem right in terms of playing them, but like they just have no upside whatsoever. Like, are you going to pay 5.5k for Arias, who has one home run on the season and one stolen base? Yeah, he's hitting almost over 400, but like he gets on base and doesn't do anything with it. So, like, I don't want to pay 5.5k for a guy like that. Solaire, he's got the home run upside. Sure, absolutely, we we can go with him. Uh, Cooper, 5k. Do you want to be paying 5k for a guy who in the past 42 days has zero home runs and zero stolen bases? Like, I don't know. I don't like, yeah, they have the highest applied run total on the slate. Yes, they are in Coors, but man, like this team is just, I, there's no upside to them in my opinion. So watch them go out tonight. They're going to hit like six home runs. They're going to score 12 runs. You just know it. Uh, all because I'm saying this. But like I just, I don't know. Yeah, like they're in play. But man, they're, they're, they're fourth uh, down here. You can see I have them right behind Seattle, Atlanta, and uh, Colorado at that point. I'd much rather go on the Colorado side of things. Uh, going up in Cabrera. Cabrera, like I don't know how far he's going to go into the game. Uh, but you could get that Miami bullpen too. So. I'd have much more interest uh, on the Colorado side of things if you do go with this Coors Field slate. Um, Atlanta, a little bit of rain. Pay attention to that. Uh, they're going up against Stone. Stone got lit up in his first start, uh, his MLB debut. That was about a month ago um, at this point in time. But uh, you can see like the pricing is comparable to the Coors Field guys. Um, it, there is just that rain threat, but I do like they're going up against a pitcher who can struggle. Um, he, he did better. He like he is a higher prospect in the Dodgers organization. Um, he did better in his minor league starts um, after his MLB debut where he got absolutely torched uh, by, I want to say Philadelphia. I could be wrong about this. Philadelphia. Um, but he did better in his... In his uh, starts after that but I do have a lot of interest in Atlanta do you think maybe they get a little bit lower ownership which makes me like them even more because of the rain threat um and yeah but Olsen Murphy Riley pretty much anybody even they always have a cheap outfielder uh, that you can go to as well but my favorite stack on the slate is going to be Seattle going up against Oakland going up against Moeller uh if Moeller doesn't go long they get that dreaded dreaded Oakland bullpen um and they're cheaper than Coors Field they're cheaper than Atlanta uh so I do think that Seattle is actually going to be my favorite stack um and my favorite uh target for bats on uh on the slate Glenich he's going to be starting things off 4.6k just four Far too cheap uh, with the numbers that he's able to generate and the matchup that he's going to be in. Uh, Tasker Hernandez, I think, is up. Oh, excuse me. Also, just way too cheap uh, for you know the matchup for the numbers that he's able to generate. I do you like him there? Julio Rodriguez. Do you want to go with all three outfielders from the same team? I don't know. I don't know. Visually, it doesn't look great. Uh, but I mean, if it's kind of where it shakes out, it's where it shakes out. It's just kind of tough because, you know, outfielders in the in many, many lineups, like those are the guys that are hitting in the cleanup spots. Those are the guys that you want to be playing. So it's tough to get like a stack of a team that's like, you know, of first, second, third base. Um, it just kind of shakes out kind of funny like that. Uh, but Julio Rodriguez, he's going to be in a smash spot too. Uh, don't get me wrong. But if you want to go down to like Crawford, if he's leading off, um, absolutely going to have interest in him at 3.3k. Uh, but like if we just did this, let's just throw in Clinch. I mean, you got near 4k remaining for the rest of your guys. So Seattle's going to be my favorite stack uh, on the slate. Uh, moving forward here. So going into the GPP side of things, I do have the Angels uh, going up against Tanner Houck. Houck, he, you know, he had that just atrocious <laughs> spring training, but you know he's turned it around. He's been fine um, so far to start this season. But Angels, they actually do hit right-handed bats very, very well. Uh, I talked about it in a previous video, but guys like Otani, Trout, Renfro, and Drury, all four of those guys have an ISO of over 250 against right-handed pitching. Uh, and a Woba, I think it's like, 
I think the Woba numbers were like 350 or above or 300 and above for all of them as well. Uh, so those four guys can absolutely mash right-handed pitching, uh, even as a couple of them are right-handed bats. Um, so like Renfro, Trout, that's your issue. There's your outfield. Uh, but maybe if you do fade Seattle, um, I guess this is more of a GPP play, in my opinion. Uh, but you can go with, like, Drury, Otani, all that stuff. Dr drop Drury to second base, Otani to first base. Then you can leave an outfield spot open for another... Um, Another stack they do want to pair them with. So I do like uh, the Angels just because their their numbers against right-handed pitching are so solid. Um, and you have like the expensive bats of Otani and Trout who are probably going to get a way lower ownership just because of the Coors Field slate and uh, Seattle being pretty cheap overall. So I do like uh, the Angels in that side of things. Uh, I do like Boston on the other side uh, to kind of round that out. Maybe you want to do a full game stack. Who knows? Probably not, uh, but I do think that that could certainly be in play here. Cheap guys, uh, Minnesota and Detroit. Um, San Francisco, they're cheap. This is a leftover play. Like, I don't even know. I, I just had no interest in San Francisco here. Uh, but Minnesota and Detroit, uh, both cheap. Detroit's going up against Singer, who allows a lot of hard contact. Uh, so that's kind of why I have them in there. Uh, Green would be my favorite play. McKinstry, uh, probably right after that, is my top two Detroit plays. Uh, but Minnesota, going up against Brebia, going up against Manea. I think they're doing a, a, the pitching opening, pitching long relief uh, kind of deal here. But... Minnesota, they're just super cheap, super affordable. I know the bats have been kind of frustrating, um, and the injuries for sure have been extremely frustrating, uh, but they have a lot of left-handed bats uh, that would have a lot of interest in um, moving forward. So, yeah, I, I don't know. That's that's kind of where things shake out. I do think it's a pretty easy slate in terms of, like, salary, jamming guys in, but in my opinion, it's going to be lock and over. Pick one of Castillo or Javier. Um, even Burns or Morton, if more for GPP. Uh, and then jam in Seattle, maybe get a Coors Field uh, action, and then just pay attention to the rain uh, and weather in Atlanta. So that kind of covers everything. Hope uh, this was helpful and kind of uh, guiding you in the right direction for the slate. Uh, thanks, as always, for watching. Uh, good luck. And uh, Megaroar is going to be talking to you guys in the slate tomorrow.